Hi everyone, Igor from Vinus Reverie, the shop for the adventurous wine drinker. And today for our uh, wine of the day, we have a special uh, cuvee from uh, Jean-Francois Moreau uh, from the Loire Valley. And the, the wine is Cot. Uh, what is Cot? Well, I'll have a special guest, uh, um, Damon Goldfuss from World Wine Brokers. He'll join me in one second, and we'll uh, he'll get, tell more uh, details about this very unique NHT wine. There he is. Hey, David. Hey guys. I just gave a little introduction about the wine and a little introduction about you that you you work for Swirl the Wine uh, Broker. So if you kind of uh, give a little overview, oh, and then we'll kind of jump into the wine. Absolutely. Swir Swirl, uh, I, I've been working with Swirl for over a decade now, um, covering all of uh, many areas in Northern California. But uh, uh, we are a, a direct importer uh, of some Italian wines, some Greek wines. Um, and then we work with a few other people um, like um, Eric Solomon and uh, Jean David Hedrick, who brings in the wine that we're talking about today. Um, yeah. That wine, I don't know if you've seen the bottle there, uh, that yes. beautiful label um, is Jean-Francois Mario, and he um, is a third generation, um, uh, a third generation uh, vigneron um, from Turin uh, in the Loire Valley. And um, John, uh, let me take one step back, and John, John David Hedrick was a, um, he was a, an account manager um, and a, a product manager for Eric Solomon for two decades before he ventured out on his own and focused only exclusively on the Loire Valley. So this is just, um, you know, miles outside of, uh, of Paris. Um, he focuses on Loire and Champagne. Um, this is one of the first uh, producers that he found in the region um, of Terrain. And uh, Jean-Francois Mario focuses on um, traditional varietals like um, Cap Franc, uh, Sauvignon Blanc, Chenin Blanc, and then he also loves uh, some of his old vines of Cote, which is uh, Malbec, um, originally from Bordeaux and Cahors in the southwest of France, but uh, um, has been growing here for a long time uh, in the region. Dark, um, dense, but this one particularly is all concrete, so it gives it a little bit of a lift uh, in the aromatics, also a little bit of light, a little bit lighter weight on the palate. Um, it's just a delicious wine. Um, uh, what do you think? Well, let me test it out. Oh, I love the <laughs> nose on it. And, and, and you, I was going to actually ask you about concrete. Uh, can you kind of explain uh, uh, what are the effects of concrete on the I impact on the wine versus wood versus stainless steel, for example? Do, do you know uh, kind of the differences yeah, that potentially so, you could have? Yeah, so it's it's right in the middle, essentially, of stainless steel where there is, it's an anaerobic. So there's no oxygen, there's no air in it. A lot of times the, the, the things are capped, the uh, tanks are capped at the top where there's no oxygen getting into it. In a barrel, on the other, on the other hand, would be when you um, uh, get lot, a lot more oxidation. You see that Chardonnay, you see that Pinot, yes. you see that in different sizes of woods as well. Um, and that is just a, um, um, a, Per mortal uh, uh, or permeable um, uh, fermentation technique uh, yes. or aging technique. Concrete has been also around for a long time where um, they're actually in the grains of the concrete. There is, it's porous, right? So there's a lot of oxygen that gets trapped in it. Um, and in so uh, that there is a slight, um, slight, uh, um, what's the word? Uh, uh, aerobic activity during the fermentation. So that means that oxygen is playing in the fermentation process. So it allows the wine to be a little tighter and brighter, um, gives it a little lift on the aromatics. Um, and that would, and that doesn't go just for the cote, but the, but all, any wine that would do that. Um, another one that would be in between stainless steel and barrel, um, you have concrete, but you also have amphora. So a lot of people mm -hmm. are playing with amphora, which is clay. <laughs> It holds, it's still porous as well. So it adds um, an element of oxygen without being uh, adding lots of flavor like you would get yeah. from, from 
from a vanilla from a French barrel or, yeah. or, or other flavors from a um, barrel. So. Well, the, the stuff that has aromatics, as you were mentioning, I, I, to me, it's more uh, mineral notes versus fruit notes that I typically associate with uh, Argentinian Malbec. Right. So, you know, a Malbec has been, has come on to everyone's radar through the lens of South America um, in the high altitudes of, of uh, Mendoza and Uco Valley. And, um, but its origins are here. Um, it's where we, in France, where you'll find a lot more older vines. Um, yeah. You see it blended away in Bordeaux, of course. Um, or blended with with other regions uh, in other regions, but uh, in um, in Turin uh, and through this producer, um, there is there's two plots. One is 50 year old vines, yeah, and one is 100 year old. Sorry, <laughs> yeah, 100 year old vines. Yeah. Uh, number two, and um, uh, so that adds to the minerality character yeah. that you're getting. Um, yes, and it's. But it's also absent of the vanillin and the other oak influences yeah. through the concrete fermentation. So a little geeky, I would say, altogether yeah. in our conversation so far. The yeah. wine itself, I mean, let's just take it back to the producer who focuses on a lot of different varietals. He yeah. has a special plot of this coat that he really loves and has been, uh, I think it was his great, great grandfather who planted it. Yeah. Um, he is the... It's three generations of this namesake, and um, he is named for his grandfather, Jean-François, yeah. uh, Jean and uh, the, the label itself, um, he plays in um, old vine um, wines of the region. So Sauvignon Blanc, they never let really go over 75, or I mean 25. Yeah. 25 years old, same with most whites, never really yeah. go, you don't hear old vine white, but you do hear it of reds. Uh, other varietals he plays with is Pinal Danis, which is a little geeky, but from this region. Right. Uh, plays with Gamay as well. And he also plays with Cap Franc, like I was saying. So, um, and he makes a range of wines. And so this is kind of a decision yeah. that he's choosing to make in concrete because he thinks that makes the best product of this Malbec, this cult. Yeah, and it's very nice. And you were mentioning, you know, he makes one Chenin Blanc, Sauvignon Blanc, yeah. Gamay, Cabernet Franc, and, and uh, very unusual. As far as I know, uh, I don't know if they don't, uh, they don't make that much Malbec in the Loire Valley or not that much is uh, imported. But uh, this is the first time I came across Malbec from Loire, and it's an excellent uh, example. Yes, to both of those. So, yeah. Um, he owns. Uh, 35 hectares, which is about 50 acres. So it's a yeah. big, I mean, it's a sizable property that you would cons consider, you know, to a big ranch here in California yeah. or whatever. Um, um, but of that, it's it's one and a half acres of this cult. So it's yeah. in small production. It is in old vines. It is uh, his uh, familial um, heritage property. Um, but in the area, there's other people who make it. You don't see a lot of it, though. Yeah. I mean, a lot of it gets blent blended it away into the Pinot Denise and the Gamay's, the lighter yeah. reds, just to give them a little bit of heft. But, um, uh, I, you know, Malbec's origin is, is still in the southwest of France. Yeah. Um, so this is not its, this is not its motherland. But, uh, um, but well, yeah, you know, it's you, funny. You oh, see, for, I yeah. would say there's probably four, maybe four or five producers that you see here on the West Coast. Yeah. Um, but, and that's why, and I think that's why they put it in concrete. Um, to make it simple, it's not a, it's not a, um, it's not a big robust wine. It's just yeah. something. To, it's quaffable. It's enjoyable. It's, um, I mean, you can go with a lot of different dishes. And, um, well, it's funny. Yeah, you mentioned that because uh, we have a, a little nice cafe here in, in uh, um, uh, pleasant and close to where where I live, uh, uh, the Press. And we had uh, for lunch uh, a mushroom melt from them, and I'm like, man, this would have went great with that. Because you're right, it's on the lighter side, just like a lot of Loire Valley, because it's a cool climate area. So typically that goes towards the lighter uh, you know, wines, both red and white. And I think this would have been great. So I, I don't know, what, what do you typically have this with? You know, uh, the, um, a coat, um, I would go, you know, I, I still want to steer towards 
even a, a pork dish or a, a, but you know we I, i'm not traditional french cooking at my house i like to experiment a lot um, yeah. but we're we do um you know we do pulled pork stuff we do a little bit of barbecue that can yeah. go in that direction as well yeah um, you're not getting a lot of smokiness but you said the minerality kind of comes up a little bit through the wine what can match um it can match smoke for sure it is darker buried in flavor so when we say it's light, we're talking about the body of the wine yes. as compared to of another red wine, correct? Yeah. And so with that, we, you know, it, it's just drinkable. I mean, I, I think it's just drinkable on its own as well. So um, it's great. <laughs> it does, you know, with, with it, it, it does have a long maceration time. So that's the amount of time that through the fermentation that stays on its skins. Yes. And so it is inky. Um, but it's it's kind of this juxtaposition of like dark in color but light in body yeah. and um and 100 delicious but um but if you do look in and if you are able to find uh cote or malbec um from yeah. france from cowers in the southwest or in um or in turin um turin in the loire is uh, the west, the uh, the eastern edge of Anjou uh, yeah. is probably the most formidable place for the, to find this grape, um, but not in any kind of major capacity. So, well, I, I think you know if, if you like Malbecs, and I think a lot of people love Malbecs from Argentina. I think this is a great example to try something different uh, and see kind of the whole spectrum of the grape, how uh, you can uh, variate from different parts, you know, of, of France. It's birthplace, yeah. Do you, uh, at Venice Reverie, do you have any other uh, Malbecs or Cohor? Uh, we, we have Cohor, uh, and, and we yeah. do have uh, from Argentina, you know, obviously, but this is the first one we brought in from Terrain, and uh, oh, wow. you know, thank you for your recommendation. I, uh, excellent decision on my behalf to bring this in. So, uh, you know, I, I'm yeah. enjoying and, it, yeah. And, and uh, something really cool about the producer is that his price points across the board are yeah. I mean, everything that he sells, even at his top, top tier, is 30 bucks retail. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you have it for 20, 24 bucks. I mean, yeah. it's a steal for wine yeah. um, for that price. So, so I, I, Damon, you know, thank you so much for doing this overview. I, I, I geeked out. I think people got a master class in COT, uh, which they always wanted to have. So, uh, you know, this was it. And, you know, I hope you join us uh, in the future with more. Fun selections from your portfolio, which we have a lot. So, so thank you. Yeah, be on the lookout for other wines from this producer. Like I said, it, it, he's uh, uh, four generations, hand harvested everything himself. He learned from his grandfather um, making classic Turin wines, Sauvignon yeah. Blanc, Chenin Blanc, Cote, Gamay, and Cap Franc. Be on the lookout for him. He's, he's, he's a star. Well, you just uh, so, so give us a recommendation. What would you recommend of, of what you guys have uh, from him? What would you say is your next favorite line to, uh, to taste? From him? Yes. Yeah. So this wine is called Scent Visage. This is the coat. This is the Malbec. And that means 100 faces. Uh, it's, it's emblematic on uh, the artistry there. Uh, the other one is called Bois Jacou. So the crazy forest or the crazy woods or the the weird woods, um, and that is Gamay. Um, we do have that. Uh, when we get it in stock, it goes out quick. We, I, I've built a, a, a fan base uh, yeah. of accounts of about 20 people. We bring yeah. in 40 cases. Everybody yeah. takes two to three cases and yeah. sold out the first week we bring it in. We have some more coming in, um, but you can look, you can find it at other fine retailers or uh, in Venice Reverie as well. Um, and, and I'll just say, I add a note to that, to that Gamay, uh, uh, Jason Robinson, who, who I like to follow a lot, on her uh, uh, recommended red wines of last year, she actually put that wine on her you know, best of, uh, of the year list. So, really? Uh, I, yeah. I, yes. I, don't sell off of, I sell off of my own ratings and, 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 and go on that, but uh, that's, it's, that's nice to hear. Yes, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, so that, and I think that, we're in the week, you know, we're in uh, the second week of December when all everybody's top 10 ratings come out, right? Yeah. So obviously Wine Spectator has a hundred list point that's coming out this week, but uh, a lot of people do that. My, oh, my favorite, you know, 10 bands that I introduced uh, and met this year, my favorite, uh, you know, my favorite dinner places I had this year 
yeah. that's kind of a recap and a good thing of the year and and to have that in the in the presence of, of Jancis Robinson is, is pretty well, cool. yeah because uh, she, she would highlight some uh, producer like this, you know, in my kind of experience, uh, why, uh, uh, unlikely why a spectator would, but, but, but Jance is kind of, you know, as uh, somebody uh, based in England, and I think she's got like maybe a little bit uh, uh, better sense of what is happening in, in the wine world since, you know, England is still uh, kind of the center of the wine trade. Uh, I always looked for her feedback, and I think some of the more interesting wines I bring in is because, you know, her feedback and, you know, Swirl Wine Brokers too, uh, interesting selections that you guys bring in. Yeah, we, uh, we had the opportunity to work with a couple of the, uh, of the, uh, the sparkling champagnes, or not champagnes, but uh, from the South and Dover uh, early on. And, and it's become trendy. I mean, London and, and, uh, and England uh, still is champagne favorites and heavy, but, uh, they're, yeah. they're 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 going in on their own as well um uh, and making delicious products like um i don't know if you have anything on your shelf from from that region as well but but jance's of yeah. course you've got michael broadbent you've got yeah. all like these historic raiders and authors and um influencers is, is the term now i guess yes um that um have influenced me have influenced you yes and um, and are great uh, people to follow for recommendations and um, and just information in general about wine. Yeah, yeah and, and we try to, you know, uh, 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 shops like myself, I try to bring in these interesting wines, and I don't believe they could be found in, in bigger stores or grocery stores. So I think that's the coolness of it, the geekiness of it, and, uh, you know, the fun drinking of it. So, uh. yeah. I mean, it's, 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 it's crazy to say so. Um, just to get back real quick to Wine Spectator Top 10, they, um, and even San Francisco Chronicle uh, awards list, when they put those things in, they have to have a certain amount of size mm -hmm. of, of quantity produced. Yes. Um, but something like this coat coming from Jancis Robinson's favorite wine of the year, he yeah. makes, I don't know, what, what did I say? There's an acre and a half. He makes, uh, 400 cases maximum yes. in a great, great vintage and yes. still get on the world list of something to be looking out for. And then, of course, you carry it. And then yeah. um, it, it's crazy how that kind of works. You know, you know, you're not going to find it at Total Wine. You're not going to find it at Costco. Yeah. Find it, right? so, and, and the crazy part about it is the, uh, the price of the wine is uh, ridiculously good. <laughs> right. So that's part of the fun, too. I mean, yeah. you hear... You, you know, you hear it from us talking about it and then you want to go on a hunt for it, right? You're yeah. Like, oh, you know, or you read about it somewhere and, and, and then the hunt starts, right? And so that's yeah. part of the thing as well. I found this here. Let me share it with you. What do you think? You know? So Exactly. Well, and thank you for sharing all this uh, knowledge with us. You know, I love it. Hopefully everybody watching will love it too. You know, thank you, Damon. And I hope to, to have you back soon. Really had a Absolutely. fun time. Yeah. Uh, maybe on a Friday on a Facebook or back on the IG anytime. It'd be fun. All right. Thank you, Damon. Enjoy the rest of the, of the day. All right. Ciao. Good holidays. Bye.